You're green. I am. Good news, the first Wicked trailer has finally dropped. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're breaking down the newly released first look at the upcoming Wicked movie, part one. If you're unfamiliar with the musical, there will be spoilers ahead. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. It's the wizard who should be afraid of me. Number five, a glimpse into Oz. Okay, who didn't squeal at that striking opening shot of Alphaba's smoking witch's hat? It's a strong start, but what could it mean? The best way to bring folks together Something has changed within is to give them a real good enemy. Fans of the musical or even The Wizard of Oz know that the character has an unfortunate encounter with a bucket of water. So could this be a foretelling of the film's conclusion? We also get glimpses of the elaborate and impressive costumes that are certainly reminiscent of the show, but showcase more intricate details beyond what the stage could fully reveal. We follow a mysterious figure riding horseback across a fantastical Oz landscape and catch a first peek at Elphaba's famous flying monkey, possibly Tristory crashing out of a window. The train journey to Oz gives us a whirlwind tour of the bustling Emerald City, perhaps teasing hints of one short day. Every way that you look in the city, There's also a gorgeous shot of Ariana Grande's Glinda resting her head on Alphaba's shoulder in a poppy field that feels like a nostalgic nod to the 1939 film. We also couldn't talk about the Ozian settings without discussing what appears to be a shot from Glinda's wedding. Yes, you heard that right. Fans of the musical know that Glinda and Fierro's engagement comes as quite a surprise to the would-be groom, and they actually never make it down the aisle. Though it is, I admit, the time is fit. Like I Yet in the trailer, we see Glinda in what looks like a pink cave, seemingly wearing a wedding gown while holding a pink bouquet. She's also surrounded by yellow butterflies and, we guess, wedding guests? Some see yellow butterflies as symbols of transformation, rebirth, and hope. So perhaps this frame isn't exactly what it seems. Not simply, pause getting your dreams. Number four, storyline and plot points. We know that the upcoming Wicked movie is split into two parts. However, how it's being divided is still up for speculation. In the trailer, we see Alphaba and Glinda arrive at Shiz University and meet each other for the first time. You're green. I am. There's also that unforgettable moment at the Ozdust Ballroom where Alphaba first dons her iconic hat. You know, the one Glinda gifts her as a prank in the show. It seems like this retelling will dig deeper into Alphaba's training sessions with Madame Morrible, who's played by Michelle Yeoh. We see the student-teacher dynamic in action, with the headmistress offering Alphaba some advice on how to wield her powers. Once you learn to harness your emotions, the sky's the limit. We also see her teach Alphaba what appears to be a levitation spell, which may foreshadow a significant turning point later in the movie. Something just takes over me. And when it does, bad things happen. As we briefly mentioned before, it looks like we're in for a trip to the Emerald City with our iconic duo. We can't wait to see how they bring the showstopper One Short Day to life on the silver screen. One short day in the Emerald City. One short day to have a lifetime of fun. Did you also spot Dorothy Toto and the gang? In the musical, Dorothy's adventures mostly take place offstage, so we're intrigued to see if and how they might expand her role in the movie and connect the two stories even more. Bring to me. The trailer wraps up with scenes of Alphaba stepping into her power, including that iconic Defying Gravity ending, where Madame Morrible, Glinda, and others watch her take flight. Since the number serves as the Act 1 finale in the musical, many have wondered if it will do the same for Part 1 of the movie. Number 3. Character Introductions Back in April 2023, the movie's director, John M. Chu, gave us our first glimpse of Cynthia Erivo as Alphaba and Ariana Grande as Glinda. Okay, they were a bit distant and in dim lighting, but it still got us all kinds of excited. Now the trailer shows us some of their co-stars. The best way to bring folks together. Something has changed within me. 
is to give him a real good enemy. It kicks off with Jeff Goldblum, who plays the wizard, in voiceover, and later we catch quick glimpses of him in character, too. Michelle Yeoh looks fierce as Madame Morrible, in the best way, of course. Were we expecting anything else? In a blink and you'll miss it moment when Alphaba and Glinda first meet, you can spot SNL's Bowen Yang, who plays Glinda's friend Fanny, on one side of her. Meanwhile, Harlot's actor Bronwyn James, who plays another friend called Shen Shen, stands on her other side. You'll recognize these names if you've read Gregory Maguire's novel. Something is not the same. Something just takes over me. Also, keep an eye out for Alphaba's sister, Nessa Rose, at the Ozdust Ballroom. She's played by Marissa Bode, predominantly a stage actor who, like her character, uses a wheelchair. Standing just behind her is Ethan Slater, best known for the SpongeBob SquarePants The Broadway Musical, who's playing Bach. Now you'll really want to pay close attention here because at around the 29-second mark, Jonathan Bailey of Bridgerton fame appears as Fierro, another shiz student who starts out shallow and carefree, but gains depth through his relationship with Elphaba. Kayala Settle from The Greatest Showman will play a new character named Miss Cottle. Though not spotted in this trailer, we hope to see her in the next one. This is me. Look out, this here I come. Number 2. Iconic References Let's talk about Glinda's wardrobe. The trailer gives us a glimpse of several fabulous looks, but we want to focus on that pink dress. Glinda's bubble entrance in the musical is iconic, and Grande's dress during this scene seems to nod to both the stage show's gown and Billy Burke's attire from the 1939 movie. But of course, it has been Glindified in its own unique way. It's good to see you. Remember the shot of Alphaba and Glinda in the poppy field? Another frame shows four individuals dashing through rows of flowers, which reminds us of this moment from the MGM classic. Well, come on, then. What are we waiting for? Nothing. Let's hurry. Yes, let's run. Come on, come on. Hurry, hurry. Some say this could be part of the opening number, with the figures rushing to spread the good news about the witch's death. Now about those ruby shoes. Give me back my slippers. I'm the only one that knows how to use them. They're no use to you. Give them back to me. Give them back. Keep tight inside of them. Their magic must be very powerful, or she wouldn't want them so badly. If you can take your eyes off the adorable Toto for a second, you'll see that they're silver in this version. Also, where can we get a pair? Despite Judy Garland's ruby pair being world famous, both L. Frank Baum's The Wizard of Oz and Maguire's 1995 novel describe the shoes as silver. They also lead us to another iconic movie scene where Dorothy and her pals, let's pause to appreciate that impressively realistic cowardly lion, first meet the wizard, or rather, the version of himself he presents to the world. I am Oz, the great and powerful. Who are you? While the 1939 projection was groundbreaking for its time, this wizard has a higher-tech update more aligned with the stage show's technology. Oh, and let's not forget the flying monkeys. They might have a bigger role in Wicked than in The Wizard of Oz. Their blue wings seem to be inspired by their onstage counterparts. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Musical Moments This is a musical, so let's talk about the music. Barely five seconds in, we're treated to a snippet of Arrivo's rendition of the show's show-stopping number, Defying Gravity. Something has changed within Is to give him a real good enemy. We continue to get more fragments of the song throughout, intertwined with excerpts of dialogue. Something is not the same. While Defying Gravity is the main track we hear, there are seemingly nods to other tunes as well. We've pinpointed where we think One Short Day might slot in. However, given that Glinda makes her grand entrance by Bubble at the start of the show, it's probable that these shots represent No One Mourns the Wicked. Alternatively, they could be from the reprise at the top of Act 2 or the final scene where the song is partially reprised as part of the finale. Still, the moment that sends tingles up and down our spines is this exchange between our two leads. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. 
It's the wizard who should be afraid of me. Anyone who has seen the show or perhaps caught Adina Menzel in Kristen Chenoweth's performance at the 2004 Tony Awards will recognize it as the lead-in to the iconic number. Something has changed within me. Something is not the same. Our tingles barely have a moment to subside before they hit us with Arrivo's take on perhaps one of the most famous riffs in modern musical history. That riff will replay in our minds until Thanksgiving 2024, when part one of Wicked is currently slated to be released. The Wizard will see you then. <laughs> what are your initial thoughts on the first glimpses of the Wicked movie? Do you think it's going to be wonderful or wicked? Let us know in the comments. Once you learn to harness your emotions, the sky's the limit. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.